Hey, what's up Blender users, I'm Jonathan, and in today's video we'll go over my process of styling a point cloud. Why? Because I think point clouds are cool, but upon creation they come out as a complete mess, as you can see right here. So let's use a little script I wrote to convert this messy point cloud into this grid-like form, which will make the point cloud much more readable. First of all, we of course need a point cloud. This time I used this dataset with photos I personally took outside. And you can see that I'm just walking around this door right here and shooting from different angles. The program I'm using to create this point cloud is Visual SFM. Besides Meshroom, this is another free photogrammetry tool, which is a lot faster than the other free programs. Sadly, it only comes with a non-commercial license, but this license allows us to export all of our point clouds. This right here is my sparse reconstruction and this here is the dense reconstruction. When calculating the dense scene, this model will also be automatically exported as a PLY file, so we can use it in Blender. To import this point cloud into Blender, I'm using the Blender Point Cloud Visualizer, which you can find on GitHub. It is just this Python file, which you can install like any other add-on. Once installed and activated, you should see a tab called PCV on the side right here. It may also be called Point Cloud Visualizer. You can change that in your preferences. Now we need an object which the Point Cloud will be applied to. So let's delete everything in our scene and add in a plane or any other object and delete all of its vertices. Now we just have this empty object that basically just consists of an origin right here. We can now select a PLY file. And now I've selected the door file. And you can see that this door file consists out of 5.7 million points, which we can just draw into our scene with the click of this button. Now, of course, this door is oriented incorrectly. So let's quickly change that. And now we have this model correctly placed in our scene. Now, to actually use this script I wrote, we need to convert it into a particle system. The script basically loops through all of its faces and aligns them to a grid. So we need to create faces from these points. And this again works by converting it into a particle system. For better performance, I would suggest you to turn down the sphere subdivisions to one. And I will also disable all and only use maybe 25% of all particles. Now let's click on convert and wait a few seconds. So now you can see that all of the points have been converted into a particle system. Now, we actually do not need this particle system because we will only render the faces which are right now used as the emitters for the particles. So let's select this new object and just disable this particle system from render. We need to make sure that under render we have show emitter ticked because we actually want to render our emitter. Now, you can quickly check if everything was converted correctly and yes, all of the colors are there. But make sure that you first go into the image editor, select the baked particles colors map and save it because it will not be saved when Blender closes. And you can see this right here. When I try to close this file, we will have to save this image. Once you've done that, we can continue with the script. So with the object selected, open another window and head over to the text editor. We now want to create a new text and copy and paste the script in it. You can find the script in the video description. And right here you can see that we are basically looping through all of the faces and then rounding the faces position to two digits, which is the equivalent of aligning it to a grid. And after that we are just moving all of its three vertices to the new location. So before we run it, let's quickly go to window and toggle the system console, which we can use to view the process of our script, because it can take a little while. Now to know exactly how long it will take, we can activate the statistics and see that our model has about 1.4 million faces. So let's run the script. And in the console, you can now see how many faces have already been updated. And once this number reaches 1.4 million in our case, the script will have finished. Now you can see that after just a few seconds the script has finished and the point cloud actually does look a lot different. You can now see that when we scroll out 
These artifacts will pop up just because it is such a tight grid that Blender has a hard time visualizing it from a distance. But if we zoom in and especially in for example front view, you can see this grid really taking effect. Now we can just place our camera and even render close-ups without this point cloud actually looking messy. And yeah, that's basically it. Hopefully this video was interesting and you learned something. If you did, consider liking and subscribing and we'll see each other in the next video.